Most people don't spend a lot of time thinking about their joints until there's a problem. Arthritis, a torn ACL, things like that can quickly lower our quality of life. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the knee joint in particular, but a lot of what we say about the knee joint applies to joints throughout the body. They're all about allowing movement, but they need a lot of structural support and a lot of things to reduce the friction to make them continue working properly throughout the course of our life. So let's jump to the whiteboard and get started. Now this video is all about the knee, but before we get into the specifics of the knee, let's take a look at synovial joints in general. Now opposed to fibrous joints, such as the sutures between the bones in your skull that allow for no movement whatsoever, or the cartilaginous joints like in our spine, we've got the cartilage discs between the vertebrae of our spine that allows for a little bit of movement of the spine. Synovial joints, however, are all about movement. Think of all the parts of your body that move a lot, such as your shoulder joint, your elbow joint, your wrists, your hips, your knees, your ankles, those are all synovial joints and they're all about movement and having a big range of movement. So this diagram shows things that are common to all synovial joints. We've got multiple bones that are gonna be connected in the joint. We've got articular cartilage between the two bones. That articular cartilage is gonna reduce the friction so the bones don't wear too much on each other. They're gonna be filled with synovial fluid and that's gonna act as a lubricant for the joint to reduce friction even more. And they'll be surrounded by what we call a joint capsule. And the joint capsule is gonna hold in the synovial fluid and provide a little bit of extra support and stability. Usually synovial joints also have some other ligaments that are gonna help stabilize the bones. And we're gonna see four ligaments in the knee. Speaking of which, let's jump into the specifics of the knee joint. So there's four main bones that make up the knee joint and we see those on the diagram here but before we name them let's orient ourselves a little bit here we have the lateral side that's going to be towards the the side and then here we have the medial side which would be towards the midline of the body and so if this was the medial side then we should have another knee just to the to the side of that so we have the medial side of our knee right here We've got the lateral side of our knee right there, and then we've got another leg over in this corner. So the bones that we have here, we've got the femur up at the top, we've got the tibia down here, and then we've got the fibula over here on the side. In addition to those three, we've got the kneecap with the patella bone, which is gonna rest just anterior to the femur. That patella can actually slide a little bit along this groove in the femur there as the knee bends. Now I'm not gonna draw it, but there is connective tissue connecting the patella up here and down here to the other bones. But if I draw that in, it's gonna cover up all the rest of the diagram. Now, like I said, on any synovial joint, we're gonna have articular cartilage that covers the ends of the bones. So it's drawing in the articular cartilage right now on what we call the condyles of the femur. This is a condyle and that's a condyle. And these sort of these two pieces that are sticking down out of the femur. Those condyles are gonna sit into grooves on the tibial plateau. And you see the top of the tibia is sort of flat, kind of like a plateau is. So the condyles here are gonna sit down into the tibial plateau. The first supportive structure we're gonna draw on here are called the menisci. You've got two of them. We're gonna have a lateral meniscus over here on this side, and we've got a medial meniscus over here on this side. And what those menisci do is they act as cushions for that femur. Now, your whole body weight is gonna be supported by the knee. We also run and pivot, and that's gonna put pressure on the knee. And so it's really important that we have lots of cushion and stability in this knee joint. Now I keep using the metaphor of a cushion and I use a wheelchair and I sit in a cushion. This cushion adds extra padding and so it's gonna spread out my weight over a greater surface area. So instead of all of the weight pushing down on the ends of that femur, it's gonna spread it out over the full like size of this cushion or the meniscus here. The menisci also kind of form a C shape, sort of like this cushion does. This cushion is concave, meaning it kind of dips down. And when I sit in this, it actually provides a little bit of side to side stability because it's sort of this shape right here. And the same thing with the meniscus. The meniscus is gonna provide a little bit of stability by it sort of wrapping around the condyles of the femur there as it sits down into the meniscus. So menisci act as a cushion and provide a little bit of stability. The majority of the stability though comes from four ligaments that are gonna connect the femur and the tibia in the knee joint. The first one here is the anterior cruciate ligament or the ACL. And you've probably heard of an ACL and you may know someone who's torn their ACL. It's a really common sports injury. In a torn ACL, just like it says, this ACL will tear in half right in there and it'll have to get replaced for that person to be able to stand up and put weight on their knee again. Now what the anterior cruciate ligament does is it prevents the tibia from moving anteriorly. Anterior cruciate ligament prevents the tibia from moving anteriorly. And actually to check and see if somebody's had an ACL tear, that's what somebody does. They'll take the tibia, they'll sort of hold it on the calf muscle and they'll pull it anteriorly or pull it forward. And if it moves forward more than it should, 
That's a common indicator that the ACL has been torn and is going to need to be repaired. If that's the case, the doctor is going to use some other imaging technique to determine the extent of the damage. But that's kind of the first thing to do is to take the tibia, move it forward, and if it moves farther than it should, a torn ACL. Now just posterior to the anterior cruciate ligament, of course, is the posterior cruciate ligament. You'll notice in the diagram that the two ligaments sort of cross each other, hence the name cruciate. Cruciate means to cross like the word cruzar in Spanish, and the posterior cruciate ligament does the opposite. It's going to prevent the tibia from moving posteriorly or moving back farther than it should. If either the anterior or the posterior cruciate ligament are damaged, they're going to need to be replaced, and the person's not going to be able to stand up and put weight on their knee without those ligaments holding it steady and supporting it. Now those two ligaments are about providing forward and backward stability. For side-to-side -side stability, we've got two more ligaments that are called the collateral ligaments. Collateral just means to the side, and both of these ligaments are kind of to the side of either knee. And we've got the lateral collateral ligament. Try saying that five times fast. Lateral collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament. Nope. And the medial collateral ligament. What the collateral ligaments do are they prevent the knee joint from rocking side to side like this. If it starts to rock one way, then that ligament will pull taut and prevent it from rocking too far. And so that provides some rotational stability of the knee, whereas the cruciate ligaments provide forward and backward stability of the knee. But all of these ligaments are important for keeping the knee stable as you walk around and put weight and pressure on your knee. Now there's a couple things not pictured in the diagram. One of those is the synovial fluid. And the synovial fluid is gonna fill the joint. It's gonna be throughout here and in fact, if you ever get a procedure done where they have to go in and look inside of the knee to find ACL tear damage or meniscus damage, and they send in the arthroscope into the knee, you'll see that it looks wet and filled with fluid, and that's because it is. So there's synovial fluid all throughout this right here. There's also something called the joint capsule, and the joint capsule is gonna wrap around the whole knee. Now, I don't have it drawn here, and the reason, if I drew the joint capsule on here, it's gonna cover up all of the structures that we labeled. So it looks something like this. It's just gonna kind of wrap around the knee, it's connective tissue, it provides a little bit of stability, it also keeps the synovial fluid in. Well, let's get rid of that because it looks ugly. But just know that that's there, that's the joint capsule wrapping around all of this. All right, let's do a quick recap here. We've got the femur, the patella, the tibia, and the fibula, which are the bones that make up the knee joint. On both the condyles of the femur, as well as the tibial plateau, We've got articular cartilage, which will reduce the friction between the bones as the knee bends. We've got a lateral and a medial meniscus, and the meniscus are gonna act as a cushion. They're gonna distribute the weight of the body over a greater surface area by providing cushioning and also a little bit of side-to-side -side stability. We have the anterior cruciate ligament, which will prevent the tibia from moving forward and the posterior cruciate ligament, which prevents the tibia from moving backward. We've got the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament, which is gonna prevent the knee from rocking side to side. And not pictured in the diagram is we have synovial fluid, which is gonna fill the joint and help lubricate it and reduce friction. And we have a fibrous joint capsule that wraps all the way around the knee to provide a little bit of extra stability and to keep in that synovial fluid. All right, here's a blank diagram of the knee joint. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can identify all of the bones and all of the other structures that make up the knee joint. All right, first we have the bones. We have the femur, the patella, the fibula, and the tibia, the bones that make up the knee joint. We have the articular cartilage on both the femur and the tibia. We have the lateral and medial menisci, which act as a cushion between the tibia and the femur. We have the anterior cruciate ligament, which prevents the tibia from moving anteriorly or forward. We have the posterior cruciate ligament, which prevents the tibia from moving backward. We have the lateral collateral ligament and the medial collateral ligament, which provides side-to-side -side stability for the knee. We have synovial fluid that fills the knee joint, and we have a joint capsule that wraps all the way around the knee joint. Now my knee joints, of course, are kind of useless. They're not really doing a lot. They're just kind of chilling there. But if they did work, this video explains how they work. I guess my knee joints are more useful than Terry's knee joints. Poor Terry. What an awkward way to end this video. Great lesson, Mr. Siebert. Great job.